What's his face? Tom Slatter. Something like that. Yeah. Jeez, what? You know? I know. I mean, we pretend we love the album because that's what we do, because that's our job and he's paying us, but seriously, that guy again? The new direction for this new album is to uh, rip off all the other sci-fi authors that I like, the ones who aren't uh, steampunk. Because everything previously has been steampunk, it's all about, you know, brown and cogs. This is all about uh, ripping off uh, Philip K. Dick. That's the, uh, that's the basic idea. I mean, doing a homage to being inspired by Philip K. Dick. Um, we can say this is a real dick move. Thank you, Jordan. <laughs> The last album I Fit the Fourth I am very proud of, I think it's good for what it is, but it's one man in his bedroom studio doing the best that he can with programmed drums, without really knowing what he's doing. Um, Fit the Fourth, I, I, I'm very proud of it, but I think it sounds like good amateur, whereas this is going to sound professional. Um, particularly with Michael on drums. Um, I mean, the most complicated song on the album is uh, Even Then We're Scared. It's got bars in 25 and 5 and 6 and 4 and 3. Uh, and he did the whole thing in one take. Uh, the man's a monster. Also, Dan, um, who's been producing stuff, is fantastic. Um, Dan has, uh, and knows his stuff. He knows how to get a great sound in a room that is not even finished yet. Uh, and Jordan's been here too. <laughs> Jordan's been fantastic. Jordan's had some uh, great creative ideas, really thinking about the uh, detail of uh, what Michael's playing that I would not have thought of. Um, it's great. Um, he's been really useful um, previously as well. I talked about this in one of the previous blogs, but um, Jordan's help in thinking about the keys that the songs are in and uh, thinking about the structures and the balance of stuff has been really, really useful. Made me actually work. I'm usually quite lazy with my demos, you know. So one draft and then we're done. But um, I can't do that with Jordan. This is good. <laughs> Everything was at least eight minutes long. Um, uh, the new albums, there was, there's a three minute song. It's a three minute song, and that's like a verse and a chorus. It's almost a love song. Wow. Yeah. Going from you. I mean, you know, it's a love song um, about a couple being chased by evil satellites in the sky, but it's still a love song. Because of your previous modus operandi, uh, where it was just you uh, yeah. making decisions and stuff, how easy or hard is it for you to accept other people's input and seeing I mean, the negatives and the positives you know the, having a, a very talented drummer playing while you demoed and transforming or people saying you know maybe we could try that how easy or hard or different is it for you it's funny I think I've got an ego that I haven't Everything before the point where you give something to someone else and get some feedback, that's bit difficult. You feel, ah, oh, it's, my, it's my baby, I don't want to give it up. Then you give it to someone else and they give you some feedback, and that's fine. And that bit's fine, once you actually have the real thing and the other feedback from someone else. Providing, and I've been lucky, that it's been feedback from people who know what they're talking about and have good ideas. Um, so that's been great. That's been fantastic. Well, now, the new question is, the new material is really strong. And I feel like people should listen to it live. You should, you should get a band together and just do it 
life. I mean, your your acoustic shows are good fun because the songs are good and you're good on stage. But but there's so much missing from the acoustic show, isn't there? There's, you can't do all those lead lines. Can't do. Uh, I can't try and play all those those guitar lines live and get them wrong. Have everyone laughs, you know. So. Uh, well, yeah, we could do that. Do you want to play bass for it, Jordan? I've got to ask my mom. <laughs> <laughs>